Thank you very much, uh, Karen. EUREKA stands for European Registration of Cancer Care, initially uh, part of ECHO, but currently supported by the European Society of Surgical Oncology. It's a multidisciplinary team, not only looking at colorectal cancer, but all kinds of cancers. And we noticed from the Eurocourse project, called the project of epidemiologists, there are quite some differences in rectal cancer recurrence and survival in Europe, the poorest being observed in Eastern Europe, where there's less equipment available for radiation oncology and as well as for a proper diagnosis. There have been changes in cancer treatment from empirical, always abdominal perineal resection, to now more personalized. Uh, part of it should be multidisciplinary management, both by the diagnostic and th therapeutic regimens, but also quality assurance plays an important role. Do we strive to no variation? That's simply not possible. Each patient is of or an individual with differences in genetic backgrounds, lifestyles, comorbidities, especially for the elderly and patient preferences. So we want to reduce systemic variations and uh, look at under versus over treatment in our elderly populations, organ and function preservation that will be dealt in later on in the session, uh, quality of life and patient preferences. So quality assurance is essential for good medical decision making. Quality assurance programs aim to optimize the quality of care by determining standards, reduce variability, and there should be a continuous quality improvement program. Just an example of the Dutch TME trial with quality control of radiation therapy, surgery, pathology nationwide with no adjuvant chemotherapy, a close collaboration throughout the study, although only five operations under supervision were mandated throughout the study with ex, uh, external instructor surgeon and local surgeons, reducing abdominal perineal resection rate to half. Also standardization of pathology, playing an important role also in assessment, the uh, circumferential margin, but also the quality of surgery. And this led to a 10% improvement of overall survival by doing this study in the Netherlands and reducing local recurrence by 60%. So clinical trials are still very important, have a large educational effect but 99% of European patients are treated outside of the context of clinical trial. And then we come to audit a quality instrument, collecting detailed clinical data from different healthcare providers, adjusted for baseline risk, and fed back to teams, hospitals, and ultimately also surgeons. So we have an audit cycle which we published about the structure, set quality standards, collect data, compare that with the standards, develop plan for changes, implement changes, and so on. There are a number of examples, like the Norwegian Quality Assurance Program, nationwide, where they looked at the quality of care. And you see that local recurrence in five years, as a result, improved dramatically. And they calculated on a wee bit that from 1993 to 2007, 2,500 patients saved their life due to this improvement uh, of, of the quality of treatment, and the cost was 1.6 million euros. And you can see that although Nor Norway is a very rich country, that a Norwegian life is pretty uh, cheap, costing less than 700 euros. And you can see continuous improvements here in Norway every time that it was measured and fed back the local recurrence rate as well as the overall survival rate improved. And that's a continuous system. Subsequently also Sweden did that and also looked at the impact of hospital volume and found that when less than 25 procedures were performed in hospital mortality increased. But also they found that not only local recurrence and mortality had a change with uh, volume, but also rectal cancer death in the long term was significantly poorer in a low volume team. Unfortunately, this is only zero to 12 cases per year, and we strive at uh, much higher rates. 
That was done by the Danish audit. Here you can see that the number of surgical departments treating rectal cancer decreased from 52 to 26, and therefore reducing also 30-day mortality, recurrence-free survival, and overall survival by this audit system. We started in the Netherlands with a national audit system for colorectal cancer in 2009. Almost all patients are now included, and we give feedback and mirror information to all the hospitals. So you get an online feedback. You can always access and see with the red dot where your hospital is and how you perform. When you're an underperformer, you get specific feedback how you can improve. And when you're a performing excellent, you will also get a visit to see how come you've, you do it so well. And here you can see, for instance, the improvement of using preoperative MRI for rectal cancer patients over the years. So feeding back, you should do, perform better. And here you see rectal cancer patients discussed in a preoperative multidisciplinary meeting preoperatively. Every year there was an improvement. And of course, the underperformance get a warning that they should have their patients discussed. And this is an overview picture of three years uh, improving outcome in colorectal cancer, severe complications, m less 14% re-interventions, uh, hospital stay minus 8%, 30-day mortality minus 24, and in hospital mortality minus 23, and realize also what a financial impact this has, all these reductions and implications for the patient. And here you see, for instance, a comparison of the UK as a whole and the Netherlands. And three years ago, 89% of patients had an MRI versus 51% in the United Kingdom. Also here you can see an increase of laparoscopic surgery, currently up to 70% in the Netherlands, both for colon and rectal cancer surgery. And those, of course, processes are monitored, and when there are late converters or uh, percentage-wise uh, high converters, they get feedback they should change their policy. Also decreasing missing circumferential margins in rectal cancer treatment. Now it is virtually un well under uh, 5%. And also the effect of auditing on the lymph nodes found in colorectal surgery increased every year, including, of course, the pathology as well. So excellent results, however differences between European countries remain, and we should also look at these uh, at the European level. And there comes this Eureka project, increase in quality, decrease in variation, looking at outcomes and identifying best practices and define uniform data sets. So it is an international platform consisting of epidemiologists, also patient organizations like Europa Colon and clinicians of all disciplines. And we strive at large data bias, registries and mining, data comparison, identifying about best practices, consensus meetings and guideline formation, especially for those groups not included in clinical trials. So in the literature, it's only cohort studies, but for elderly patients with comorbidities, I think it's the best evidence we have so far, a good accessible database. We organized, for instance, in December 2012, a consensus for colorectal cancer management with all the societies, including nurses, Europa Colon, and registries in, uh, in Europe. On every uh, statement, we had uh, votes, and 75% of the expert voters, and when there was uh, less than 80% agreement, we reformulated the statements, and thereafter we had a three-day discussion and published it all in a, in, in a manner that you have treatment modalities and flow sheets, how treatment decisions should be made. And this is a publication in the European Journal of Cancer, but in all specialty journals, surgical oncology, medical oncology, radiology, it was published. And here you see, for instance, an international comparison. The Netherlands, Sweden, Denmark, Norway, and Belgium for neoadjuvant radiation therapy. And you see the Netherlands scores very high uh, in preoperative radiation therapy in early stages. But also due to the Mercury project, like Gina just explained, we reduced now the radiation therapy in the early stages of rectal cancer, also therefore avoiding uh, the long-term morbidity. 
neoadjuvant chemo radiation therapy was uh, higher in other countries and relatively low in the Netherlands, but still too high in the early stages. So as a result of these international comparisons indicating no differences in local recurrence, we changed our national guidelines. And here you see, for instance, stage 3 rectal cancer comparison between the Netherlands and Ireland, where we use more radiation therapy preoperatively, and they use more post-operative chemotherapy, yet survival was uh, uh, insignificant better in the Netherlands. So this can lead to questioning your national guidelines. Another and for, a very important development is looking at uh, elderly patients over 80 years, how are they treated? And here you see the difference between the Netherlands and Belgium, similar amounts of surgery, but differences in the use of adjuvant chemotherapy of 5 versus 23% at this moment without any difference in five-year survival. So you have to question as well the use of these kind of treatment. Repeated trial will be uh, uh, to talk about later on. It's a very well-running study on locally advanced rectal cancer. In a phase two study, we already found 26% of pathologic complete responses as a result of short-term radiation therapy and chemotherapy. So this study is potentially, it will be completed next year, practice changing. And therefore brings it to the international watch and wait database where uh, it is a real daily life event that we find complete responses and we need to combine forces of data collection of watch and wait approaches internationally. So we started a database for educational feedback, future consensus meetings and incorporating in the future watch and wait and the standard of care. We have three types of data, critical data with a minimal data set, secondary data with more extensive information and complete data where we even have this dose protocols of radiation therapy, chemotherapy, MRIs, etc. on file and this is all online available. So I have different data fields and whenever you put in a patient in your registry, it's like a locker in the bank. You are the owner of the data and nobody can uh, get to that data and we only have an overview. It's used Promise, Promise Project Manager Internet Server. We have an online data entry with quality checks, reporting and an ownership of your own data always. So we need to learn about the watch and wait strategy by including all patients treated according to the watch and wait strategy in one international database which has started and you can see here the, uh, the uh, internet uh, site where you can visit the database. So we piloted it together with three centers, Gerard Bates probably will talk about it from December and we have launched it in June 2015. The initial collaborating platform, obviously, is Angelita Habergama, who started this from Sao Paulo, Maastricht, Memorial Sloan Kettering, Christie's, Champolimo in Portugal, and the Eureka structure. So there is agreement that each research question is proposed to all centers for approval. Per center, organize a lifelong informed consent for the patient, so you have to ask that. There's data entry, analysis will be performed, and only when there is approval of all the centers, results will be uh, dis displayed. So again, it's like a locker in a bank. Only you have uh, access to that. The future is also to open it for brachytherapy, specifically for the elderly patients treated otherwise. And also we use it as a network for near-infrared uh, fluorescence imaging, which is a type of uh, that you can very good control what you should dissect as a surgeon or not. We are uh, now using near-infrared fluorescent contrast agents with a visible light and a near-infrared light source where you can see in your surgical display where the tumor really is. And we are entering now tumor-specific imaging with targeted uh, fluorescent probes which can also be linked to PET scanning we can see on a biopsy whether the tumor can be colored with this targeted dye, and thereafter we use this during surgery intravenously where we, I hope that it works. No, 
it does not work. That was a, mov yeah, a movie indicating that, can you show the movie please? Yeah. Here you can see the peritoneum and with this near infrared fluorescent dye you can see where the lymph node metastases are located. So when you open the peritoneum and you can remove uh, the, these lymph nodes and you can find areas uh, where the tumor is found which can be unexpected up to in the liver but also areas where it's less, it's not functioning very well, unfortunately. But here you see a lymph node where clearly, with quite a low threshold, you find tumor cells. So this will help the surgeon in the future to do more accurate surgery, to more defined surgery, and we can also use it in downstaging uh, event because we can better have a view also on the disappearance of lymph node metastasis by using it as a PET tracer. Thank you very much for your attention.